In this video, I'm going to introduce you to our first theorem, the segment congruence theorem. And just like I have a certain labeling for my postulates, I'm going to have a certain labeling for my theorems. So I'm going to start with the first theorem as T1. And then as we go through more theorems, it'll be T2, T3, and so on, until we finish all the theorems in geometry. But for now, the segment's congruence theorem. This theorem states that congruence of segments is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So reflexive is a reflexive property theorem. We have the reflexive property which is different from the reflexive property of equality in such that we have that AB, the segment AB, is congruent to the segment AB. Now, symmetric property when dealing with congruence that says that if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then segment CD is congruent to segment AB. And finally, we have transitive property. Which says that if AB, the segment AB, is congruent to the segment CD, and the segment CD is congruent to the segment EF, then the segment AB is congruent to the segment EF. These are very similar to the properties of equality, except for the fact that we're dealing with segments as opposed to real numbers. So let's go ahead and prove the segment property. And we're going to prove that in a paragraph form. So the symmetric property says that if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then segment CD is congruent to segment AB. What we're trying to prove is this segment CD is congruent to this segment AB. So now that we have an understanding of what we're supposed to do, let's write down the given. The given says that AB is congruent to CD. Now let's illustrate a picture if we can. Now we have that AB is congruent to CD. And what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that CD is congruent to segment AB. Now I'm going to do this in paragraph form, so we're just going to develop the steps by writing them out in words. So, since we have that AB is congruent to CD, then AB is equal to CD, and that's by the definition of congruence. Because the definition of congruence says that congruent segments have equal measures, so AB is equal to CD. And by the symmetric property of equality, which was dealing with real numbers, we had that if you have AB equal to CD, then CD equals AB. And remember, when you're proving a statement, you can't use the end result as one of your steps. That has to be your final and last step. But we can use the symmetric property of equality because that is a postulate in algebra. So since this is already a true statement, we can use that. So now that we have CD is equal to AB, therefore, We can use the definition of congruence again and say 
that CD is congruent to AB. And that's by the definition of congruence because we have two segments with equal measures, therefore they have to be congruent. And we went from segment AB being congruent to segment CD to what we needed to prove, segment CD is congruent to AB. And that was our paragraph or informal proof for the symmetric property dealing with congruence. Let's go ahead and prove the transitive property and we'll do a formal proof this time, so a two column proof. So remember, the transitive property said that if segment AB was congruent to segment CD and segment CD was congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is congruent to segment EF. I'll go ahead and set up our two columns. So we have statements and reasons. So we're going to start with our given, which is AB is congruent to CD and CD is congruent to EF. This is our given and that's what we need to prove. So one, we have that AB is congruent to CD and CD is congruent to EF. And reason, that is given. So two, we can say that AB equals CD and CD equals EF. And we can say that because of the definition of congruence. That's because segments that are congruent are equal in measure. Three, we can say that AB is equal to EF. And that's because of the transitive property of equality. And that property was what was shown when we dealt with real numbers. So now we're saying that the measure AB is equal to the measure EF. And from there we can say that AB, the segment, is congruent to the segment EF. And that is because of the definition of congruence we're able to take two segments that are equal and say they are congruent. And now we have what we wanted to prove. That segment AB is congruent to segment EF. All based on what was given. And a good rule of thumb to get in the habit of is writing when you're finished a proof. And that can be shown with Q E D. Q E D is an initial for a Latin phrase, quad erat demonstrandum, meaning which is what had to be proven. So Q E D, what had to be proven. And it's just a good rule of thumb to use when finishing a proof so that nobody expects you to keep going on.